Hey everyone! I apologize for not having the normal background, but I'm actually shooting in my bathroom today so that it'll be perfectly white balanced. And that's because today we're going to be talking about color theory. Oh, I'm so excited! Roll intro! I met Josh Sunquist. He makes really good videos, you should watch them. I asked him to record an outro for my videos, except instead of ending it with a fact about graphic design, he ended it with a question. So I thought I'd use his outro as an intro and try to answer that question. Stay awesome. I would like to know this. Uh, I always want to know what colors are complementary, and I really like bright colors, so I'd like to know the complementary colors of bright green, bright yellow, bright pink, and bright bright blue. It's like what looks good with each other, so please uh, somebody tell me. To answer that, we need to start with the basics. Yes, we're heading back to kindergarten, but no, unfortunately, we don't get nap time. So, our primary colors are red, yellow, and blue. We can mix our primary colors to get secondary colors. Red and yellow make orange, yellow and blue make green, and blue and red make purple. Then we can mix the primary colors and the secondary colors to get the tertiary colors. Unfortunately, though, they don't get fancy names. So we have red orange, yellow orange, yellow green, blue green, blue purple, and red purple. So that's our basic color wheel. If we split the wheel in half, we can see our warm colors and our cool colors. You can see how red and green can be either warm or cool, and we can do the same thing with gray as well. So let's say you're in Photoshop and you're looking at your color picker. If you go along the x-axis, you're adding white, so you get a tint of the original color. And if you go along the y-axis, you're adding black, so you get a shade. At this point though, we're gonna switch from an RYB color model to an RGB GB color model since we're viewing this on a screen. The RYB color model is subtractive, which means that light is reflected off of something like a painting or a poster. The RGB model is additive, which means that the colors are illuminated from some source like a computer or a television screen. So now let's look at hue saturation. Hue is basically what the color is, and saturation is how intense the color is. Lightness, which could also be called value, is how light or dark the color is. By manipulating these three Three variables, we can make any color you want. So now that we have all these words, how do we use them to make color schemes? Let's start with an easy one, monochromatic. This means that everything is the same hue, but we're going to make tints and shades by adding white and black. Getting a bit more complicated, analogous color schemes have colors that are next to each other on the color wheel, and complementary color schemes have colors that are directly opposite each other. Two colors that are the same value but opposite hues are called complements. You can see that even though they're different colors, if we desaturate the image, they're the same shade of gray. When you put two saturated complements right next to each other, the edge will seem to vibrate and it's just not very comfortable to look at. This is something that you'll probably want to avoid, especially in a YouTube thumbnail. And you can do that by changing the value of one of the colors. So now let's look at some actual YouTube thumbnails and see what kind of color schemes they're using. In this thumbnail for Who's That Chick Spoof by Shane Dawson. He's using two main colors besides his own photos. If we pull out this highly saturated yellow and purple and turn them grayscale, they are about the same color gray. However, if we look back at our RGB color wheel, they are not opposite each other. As a result, the colors are bold and eye-catching without having that annoying vibration effect. If we look at this thumbnail for I'm Naked by Smosh, it's an analogous color scheme between their light pink bodies and magenta background. It's almost monochromatic, but their bodies are a warm red, while the background could be considered a very cool red. Another trick they used was to make the shadows on the images black instead of trying to introduce another color. If you already have bright colors competing for your attention, and you really only need a highlight or shadow, you can't go wrong by sticking with a neutral color like white gray or black. So Josh, now let's take a look at your thumbnail for Kiss Miss. You're using a red, yellow, and cyan, which are all about the same value and saturation. When it's the size of a YouTube thumbnail, you can see how the colors begin to vibrate uncomfortably, especially when there isn't a black shadow to break them up. 
So what I would suggest would be to increase the saturation on the yellow and red, and to get rid of the cyan altogether so that you end up with an analogous color scheme. I replaced it with a neutral white in order to not draw attention away from the imagery. So if we look at them as thumbnails again, you can see how on the left the images are really competing for your attention against the colors, while on the right they're only enhanced by the colors around them. So I hope this little tutorial in color theory was useful to you. There's so much more I could cover, I mean I didn't even say the letters CMYK yet. So let me know in the comments if you would be interested in a part 2. Also let me know not your favorite color, but your favorite color scheme. Lately I've been a fan of black, white, and red, although the Slytherin in me of course wants to go with green, silver, and black. Okay, on that nerdy note, I'll see you guys next time.